the Rules Committee will come to order. We are uh, here for, um, it's a very exciting day, an original jurisdiction markup uh, for consideration of H.R. 6169. Uh, let me uh, begin by uh, saying that um, this is uh, an extraordinarily uh, important issue, and Mr. Woodall was the uh, first to arrive this morning and made it clear that he's uh, enthused and excited about uh, proceeding uh, with our work. Uh, Thirty-two years ago, I came to the Congress, and the first bill that I introduced was legislation calling for uh, major tax reform. I introduced legislation calling for a flat tax rate, a flat rate tax. And I um, will say that over the past uh, three-plus decades, I listen to Democrats and Republicans talk about the imperative of meaningful tax reform. I underscore Democrats and Republicans. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, the famous statement uh, by the former chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, Senator Long, who often said, don't tax you, don't tax me, tax the guy behind the tree. And I, I think that if you look at the overall goal that we have of ensuring that everyone pays their fair share of taxes and we move in the direction of simplification with the tens of thousands of pages we have in the tax code, um, what we're doing today is a, a very important first step in our quest to bring about the kind of reform that, again, both Democrats and Republicans alike support. I congratulate President Obama for his focus on reducing the top rate on job creators, on businesses. Uh, his consistent call for that uh, tax rate reduction is something that I think is uh, very good. And uh, I also note that there are many Democrats in this institution who are regularly talking about the issue of tax simplification. Uh, this measure is uh, a package that has been worked out with the Speaker of the House, the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, and we're here in uh, our capacity as members of the Rules Committee to help expedite that process. Uh, Mr. Woodall is a strong proponent of the um, so-called fair tax and uh, working to ensure that uh, other alternatives will be able to be considered within the, the framework that we have is um, an important step, and I want to thank Mr. Woodall for his effort in, um, in putting together uh, a structure that will allow us to deal with uh, a wide range of proposals. And so I, um, I just want to say that as we look at the uh, issue before us, um, the challenge of dealing with deficit reduction, the challenge of getting our economy growing, and these are very, very uh, important issues that we have uh, that need to be addressed. And again, I, uh, I want to say that I, I hope we'll be able to have uh, strong bipartisan support in this effort to move forward with a process that will ensure that while we for decades and decades have talked about this, our raison d'etre here is to ensure that we actually take action. And uh, that's what um, I hope will, will happen. And I'd like to recognize Ms. Slaughter for some comments. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I'll keep my opening remarks brief. I agree this is a very important day, but I think we're missing our opportunity. Given the importance of reforming the tax code and the magnitude of the task, I would say this is a particularly inauspicious start. The bill before us, H.R. 6169, is little more than another Republican press release dressed up as a bill. We've seen this before from the current majority. Last time it was called Repeal and Replace. The Republicans passed House Resolution 9 back in January, almost 19 months ago. They said they would put forward proposals to replace the Affordable Care Act with another way of protecting people with pre-existing conditions and some other way of increasing the number of insured Americans, actual details to be supplied later. We've seen the proposals to repeal 34 times, but nothing to replace. This is the same tired trick as before. H.R. 6169 promises tax reform that does a number of magical, wonderful things, but it's an empty promise. Just as with health care, the House Republicans don't have an actual proposal to do all these things. 
at least not one they're willing to introduce as a bill and stand behind. This bill is something shiny to wave in front of the American people to distract them from the fact that Republicans have no actual plan to achieve the lofty goals listed in this bill. And the reality is this is not a serious proposal. The goal is not to have it passed by the Senate nor signed into law. The goal is to posture. We all know that there are things you do around here if you're serious about getting something to the president's desk. You work with the other party. You work with people in the Senate, in the White House. You try to find common ground. Sometimes it takes a year or so. We hold hearings and meetings and work out an arrangement. It's called cooperation. And that's how Congress enacted the Tax Reform Act of 1986, uh, when the House was held by Democrats. But that bill was negotiated between the Democrat House, a Republican Senate, and the Reagan administration. We could learn a lot from that successful effort to overhaul the tax code. But this bill was written in a back room by some House Republicans meeting with other House Republicans, and that's why it reads like a partisan manifesto and not a good faith opening position. The shame of it is that comprehensive tax reform is an issue where there actually could be bipartisan, bicameral cooperation like there was in 1986. But making that happen would take a change in attitude by this majority, and there are no signs that such a change is coming. So here we are, holding yet an emergency meeting on a bill that appeared out of nowhere, a bill full of loopholes and opportunities for the House majority to ram its legislative agenda not only through the House, but maybe through the Senate. It's reconciliation on steroids. I will note one point of common ground, however. If you look at the findings in this bill, you will see that Republicans are finally admitting that tax subsidies to businesses can take the form of government spending through the tax code. The bill says this explicitly in Section 2A. We've been saying this all along in regard to tax subsidies for oil companies. And every time we bring it up, we're told, oh, those aren't subsidies. That's the law. But reading the findings in this bill, I say to my friends on the other side of the aisle, we are glad on that point that you have come around. And maybe this little bit of consensus can be the starting point for the real work of negotiating serious bipartisan tax reform. Heaven knows we need it, and I yield back. Well, I thank uh, the gentlewoman for her very thoughtful uh, and insightful remarks. And uh, I want to say again, I, I want to praise President Obama and the Democrats for their commitment to tax reform. And uh, I want to say that, uh, again, what we're doing today is just uh, the first step in a uh, process for us to, to take action. Uh, I remember uh, the 1986 Tax Reform Act. I uh, will say that um, there, again, are lots of different proposals that are out there. And I think that um, to malign this process, um, gosh, it brought back the memory of a big bill that was just before the Supreme Court that I don't recall had the kind of openness that we're having with this uh, issue uh, it itself. I mean, this is going to be a, a rigorous and ongoing debate. And as I said, since it's been discussed in the 32 years I've been honored to serve as a member of this body, uh, we are going to, for the first time, I think with this legislation, have a chance to really take uh, action. And we want Democrats' input. I mean, again, I praise President Obama and Democrats for their commitment to tax reform because I hear Democrats talking about this with great regularity. And so I appreciate the very conciliatory tone of the gentlewoman's uh, opening statement, especially the close of that. This can be a first step towards consensus. And uh, I will say that this is uh, much, much more than a press statement. This is a desire for us to make it clear that we, uh, we very much want to, uh, to take action. I know that Mr. Woodall has been very involved in this, and I'd like to call on him at this point. And then what I'd like to do is, is uh, turn to Mr. Sessions for uh, a motion that will allow us to offer amendments and some of the, I'm sure, very interesting proposals that our colleagues would like to offer this. So I'd like to recognize Mr. Woodall. Mr. Chairman, I very much appreciate that. I appreciate your, your, uh, your leadership. You're working with, with me, and you're working with uh, other committees for the Rules Committee to be able to exert its its jurisdiction here. I think about the challenges that Mr. McGovern has had uh, uh, dealing with 
the oil company tax issues that, that he and I have both uh, uh, said in the context of a fundamental reform we ought to be able to uh, to get rid of but there is there is interest after interest after interest in this town mr. chairman that stands in the way of the kind of cooperation uh, that Ms. slaughter uh, was talking about and when you look at when you look at what this bill lays out as a framework the kind of rate reductions that that uh, that it's asking for you're going to have to do away with every special exemption special favor special carve out give away lobbyist funded uh, rabbit hole every single one of those is going to have to be gone and you, we will, we have never seen at least I haven't in in my time the kind of outcry uh, that we're going to see when we in a bipartisan way try to move fundamental fundamental tax reform. Uh, I will say to my friend from New York, I do have a bipartisan uh, tax bill. It's H.R. 25. It's out there. It's posted. Uh, it's been studied. It's been commented on. Folks have said nice things. Folks have said bad things. It's been out there, uh, and it will remain out there. And it, it can fit in under this uh, rubric. The proposal that, that the chairman introduced when he first came to Congress, it can fit in under this rubric, as can uh, the bipartisan proposals that I know my friend from New York and my friend from Massachusetts uh, will want to add their names uh, to. I don't. I know the American people believe this town is broken, Mr. Chairman, and I think so often it is the dialogue and the kind of seriousness with, with which we approach uh, bills that slow the process down. I mean, in this uh, in this piece of legislation, we now have an opportunity to have both the serious conversation as well as an expedited process on the floor to keep the special interest from slowing this process down, but give us the opportunity to, to do this in a in a bipartisan way. Tax reform doesn't happen in a partisan way. If we've learned anything from, from the last three years, it's that doing major fundamental reform of any program in this country and doing it without cooperation is a recipe for disaster. This bill gives us the opportunity for that cooperation and to move these bills to the floor. I really do appreciate the I, I thank the gentleman for his uh, very uh, thoughtful approach. And again, I want to commend uh, Ms. Slaughter and the Democrats for the deliberative nature that they are uh, proceeding with as we uh, as we deal with this, and we very much want uh, again uh, the the input, uh, and I think that this this measure itself will allow for uh, a free flowing opportunity. Yes, it does set forth some guidelines, but again, many of the guidelines that are set forth have been proposed by both Democrats and Republicans, and so uh, we do see this as a very bipartisan effort. So the chair would like to recognize the gentleman from Dallas for a motion, and then we'll look forward to entertaining any amendments. Mr. Chairman, I move the committee report the bill H.R. 6169 to the House with a favorable recommendation. Uh, you've heard the uh, motion of the gentleman. Uh, let me just say that, um, as we've all discussed, this provides for expedited uh, procedures. I'm, I'm, I don't think I need to uh, walk through all of the uh, provisions here, but um, if there are any amendments um, that uh, that uh, members would like to offer, I'd be, be happy to entertain yep. those. Again, this is designed as, a, as an effort to ensure that rather than continuing, continuing to simply talk about the issue of tax reform, that we actually uh, take action. So, Ms. Slaughter? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, uh, let, me, let me defer to Mr. Oh, okay, McGovern. yes, Mr. McGovern. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I have a, a, a very simple amendment to the bill. Um, my amendment is designed to make sure that a bill that claims to be about tax reform uh, is not used as a Trojan horse for pet projects and initiatives from my friends on the other side of the aisle. Uh, the sponsors of this bill claim that they want to put uh, comprehensive tax reform on a fast track by giving it expedited procedures in the House and Senate. They are correct that in order to get fast track status, the bill must begin as a tax reform bill. What they fail to mention is that there is no limitation on what else can be attached to this bill. Uh, there is no requirement that the bill be limited to tax reform, uh, and that there is no prohibition on a adding unrelated uh, uh, initiatives. Uh, this could become a, a Christmas tree for uh, kind of the uh, extreme right wing's uh, social agenda. Uh, and uh, because there are numerous points uh, in the process where non-tax provisions can be inserted alongside actual tax reform. This opens up the very real possibility that the expedited procedures could be used to fast track whatever proposal the House Republican leadership chooses. They could fast track a bill that turns Medicare into a voucher system, or take away reproductive rights, or repeal the Affordable Care Act, just to name a few examples. 
Uh, and once the Christmas tree is loaded up with ornaments, the whole package will be, will be shielded from, uh, from the protections of regular order and, and both the House and the Senate. So all my amendment does is close this massive loophole, and it limits the fast-track procedures to tax reform and only tax reform and nothing else. Well, let me say I, I thank the gentleman for his amendment and to say that this issue is uh, addressed in that um, the germaneness rule uh, continues to uh, apply in the House, and uh, so I'd urge my colleagues to uh, to uh, oppose the amendment. Right, but <coughs> Mr. Mr. As, Mr. McGovern, as you know, Mr. Chairman, the House Rules Committee disposes of the germaneness uh, rule regularly. So uh, again, I would I would think that um, you know for the credibility of this initiative. Uh, you know that uh, it be that we make it very clear that this be limited to tax reform and nothing but uh, tax reform. Well, I mean, let me just say again that, <clears throat> that clearly this is this is a, a measure that is focused on tax reform, and uh, I mean, anticipating these kinds of things, we want the rules committee to obviously have uh, uh, you know maintain its uh, prerogative to deal with these issues. But I mean, we do the the issue of germaneness would be raised if any of those multifarious questions that came forward are addressed. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Woodall. Yeah, I would say to my, my friend from Massachusetts, if your amendment were to pass, uh, my bill uh, that I've worked very hard on uh, for, for a very long number of years would be excluded from consideration under this process. Uh, my bill does something that's not enumerated here. It abolishes the payroll tax, which, as you know, is the, is the largest tax burden that 80 percent of American families face, your constituents and my constituents. I think you have a very real fear about how folks could abuse this process, though there's no sunset on this bill. This is this is going to be an expedited procedure in a Republican House. It's going to be that same expedited procedure in a democratically led House. And I would say to my friend that that uh, those bills are 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 going to cross our uh, desk. And I would certainly uh, commit to the gentleman uh, that if uh, in the face of Democratic leadership, if he would uh, oppose uh, monkeying with these uh, very well intended provisions. Uh, for purposes other than tax reform, I would certainly commit to doing that on on our side. But I would I would respectfully ask the gentleman. He knows how hard I have worked on my proposal, and if his amendment were to pass, I couldn't even get a hearing uh, uh, in in this uh, great debate that should be a great debate about tax reform. And I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Vote occurs on the McGovern amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. As for recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Sessions. No. Mr. Session votes no. Ms. Fox. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Woodall? No. Mr. Woodall votes no. Mr. Nugent? No. Mr. Nugent votes no. Mr. Scott? No. Mr. Scott votes no. Mr. Webster? No. Mr. Webster votes no. Ms. Slaughter? Aye. Ms. Slaughter votes aye. Mr. McGovern? Aye. Mr. McGovern votes aye. Mr. Hastings? Mr. Polis? Mr. Chairman? No. Mr. The Chairman votes no. Mr. Clerk, the total? Total is two ayes and six noes. And the uh, amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mr. Yes. Governor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have another amendment uh, to the desk. Under this bill, the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee must introduce a bill next year containing comprehensive tax reform. Once the bill is introduced, it must be certified as valid tax reform by the Chairman of the Joint Tax Committee. And once the certification is made, the bill is given expedited fast-track procedures in the House and Senate, and no one, not even the Speaker, has the power to second-guess the certification. But my friends on the other side of the aisle uh, failed to mention one interesting fact. Next year, uh, when the expedited procedures are in effect, the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, um, if, if, my, if my colleagues are still in power, but the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee and the Chairman of the Joint Tax Committee will be the same person. So if Republicans keep control of the House, that person will be Representative Camp. Uh, if the Democrats take over, that'll, it'll be Representative Levin. The problem with this construction is obvious. The same member of the House cannot be both the author of the tax reform bill and also the sole judge of whether that bill meets the criteria for expedited consideration. So my very simple amendment that would correct this obvious, would correct this obvious flaw, flaw. My amendment would stipulate that the same member of the House cannot play the role of being the author and umpire uh, of tax reform. It will prevent one person from serving as the only check on his or her own power. Mr. Chairman, I don't know whether having both these, these roles filled by one person was intentional or whether it was uh, some sort of drafting error in the rush to hold this markup, but it is an obvious flaw in the bill, and I hope that my colleagues will support my effort uh, to correct this amendment. 
Uh, let me just uh, respond. Would you correct it with this amendment? Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, let me. Let me just uh, respond by saying that, uh, <clears throat> as you know very well, um, the chairmanship of the Joint Committee on Taxation ex shifts between the Senate and the House of Representatives. And uh, the notion of characterizing the chairman of the Joint Committee on Taxation, regardless of political party, as the sole determinant on this is preposterous. There is a professional staff that the Joint Committee on Taxation has, and they come up with clearly nonpartisan assessments. And so uh, for that reason, even though it would be the case that the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee will at the same time be chairing the Joint Committee on Taxation, there will be a professional staff. And I'd like to recognize well, that, if, if I might, I'd like, to, I'd like to recognize Mr. Webster. Oh. Maybe I was. I was just told by staff here that you were seeking recognition. If you're not seeking recognition, I'll recognize Mr. McGovern. Yeah, but I think your your bill specifically says that the chairman of the Joint uh, Committee on Taxation will has to has to certify and, and, and yes, yes, and it has Speaking to. Be, and let me just say, it has to be scored. Okay, but the chairman of the Joint Committee on Taxation is not going to be personally, uh, you know, making this kind of determination. This is work that is done by professional staff nonpartisan staff in dealing with this uh, kind of scoring. And so I, I, but, I, but, I but there's no, but, there, but is, there, is there a requirement for a vote? Um, there's no requirement for a vote. It's just, it just it, it, it's just that the, the chairman of the, of the, of the, the scoring, the, the scoring the process, the scoring process comes through from professional staff. Those are individuals who are, uh, deal with this question. I mean, we, we, we look at, I mean, we look at the, the scoring process, and it, to me, it's just silly to claim that the chairman all of a sudden comes and dick now. Maybe, maybe under Democratic control, that's what happens. But I can tell you with absolute certainty that with Republicans uh, in the majority, that does not happen. Well, there is reliance well, on the uh, on the professional staff in dealing with this. So I just I, well, I think uh, Mr. Chairman, it, it, it very specifically mentions the chairman. I want to yield to the. If you would, I. Generally, I, I just wanted to ask the chairman: if, Are you saying that decisions here should be made by professional staff and not by the members of Congress? No, not at all. There's so, a great. So that's a, that's no, no. what I got from your explanation. No, no. What I'm, what I'm saying they is, have professional okay, staff if, over there that can't vote everything. If I could respond to your question, let you me may. let me say that um, I, you know I, I would ask the gentlewoman: Does she involve herself in the details of accounting and scoring? And the answer is no. I know that. I know that. If, if I, if I might, thank you. Uh, it's it's silly to claim that the chairman or members of committees actually do this. If it weren't for our staff, we wouldn't be able to uh, to get a lot of work done around here. When it comes to budgeting, and again, specifically the scoring process, which is what the charge the Joint Committee on Taxation will have, uh, this is part of that responsibility. So I mean. It, it, it is coincidental uh, that this is the case. I mean, this chairmanship shifts between the Senate and the House of Representatives. The Senate Finance Committee chairs it, and then the chairman, the Ways and Means Committee chairs the Joint Committee on Taxation. But this is, again, a work product that is put together when it comes to these questions by the professional staff. Well, I'm happy to, happy to further well, recognize Well, it was only friend. yesterday, after a great error was made by professional a staff. A great error? An error that we had to have a... a Emergency meeting. To two, a two-letter error, yeah. But we had to have an emergency meeting to correct it. Right. Right? And you took sole responsibility for it. Yes. All right, but now you're saying the professional staff. Oh, no, no. Let me, let me and, just say, and, I, I took responsibility, and I will I take responsibility, and, and I will what take. what happened yesterday, you, you did take whatever the professional I take responsibility. Staff I take responsibility for the work product that emerges from this committee. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'm sure that taking the responsibility for the scoring that comes forward does not mean that, uh, I mean, let me tell you, I, I did not know, let me just say that I did not know that the two letters U and N had not been included in that report. I found out about it. We found out. When I found, uh, yeah, well, I was told by you. Yeah, right. Thank you very much. For, thank you very welcome. much for finding it. I want to express well, we my were, appreciation. We do it. Man, thank you. Thank you for doing that. one other thing on that, because we do want to co-op. Let me just explain like if I might. I was trying to explain, I was trying to explain okay. what happened. I did take responsibility for that, but I didn't personally. You discovered it and informed uh, my staff about this, uh, if that's exactly the way it happened, and I took responsibility because I'm the one who holds the gavel of this committee, and as such, I believe that I'm responsible for this. 
Similarly, to claim that when it comes to the professional scoring report that will come forward from the Joint Committee on Taxation, that somehow whoever, Democrat or Republican, chairs the Ways and Means Committee and the Joint Committee on Taxation is, is somehow involved in this is, I, well, I think, a mischaracterization. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I, if, oh, oh, see, go ahead. if I may, yeah, surely, I, absolutely. I really just Please. like to finish up, because my, my professional staff it just said there's nothing in the world in this bill about a score. The uh, Joint uh, Tax Chair says yes or no. Uh, if you read well, bill, but that's but, what happened. That's me, the reality. Me, the reality while, is what I'm while saying. While we're discussing this in our staff, I just want to say this. When, when you came back and we all uh, greeted you, my staff gave you a tutorial in there on the technology that we use. So you would have had that mistake this morning on the bill number. You know about that. I yes, see. and I take because responsibility. Because computers will print the bill number, uh, and particularly on the bill, and we would be happy. I just want to say that while well, we're all spray. Thank you. If you would like my staff yes. to come back up, any, we would be more than any, happy. Any help that you and your team can provide us we to, would ensure, just be delighted to ensure to that we avoid any of these exactly. uh, problems. Cut down the number because you know what? I, again, the closing in your opening statement mm -hmm. was uh, focused on the issue of consensus. Exactly. And if we can work together That's just to make right sure, off. if we can work, and I thank you, I very well, much appreciate it. If we can work together to bring about a successful resolution to ensure that any of these problems uh, don't occur again. Uh, you know, and I, and I hope very much that your staff will work with the parliamentarian's we, office as we well on this, as I, as I know. We want to be and helpful. so uh, let me again say, again, once we, we have another real indication of great bipartisanship here on the Rules Committee, and so I appreciate it. But I'm not going to encourage bipartisanship in trying to uh, strip the chairman of the Joint Committee on Taxation of his position, so I'm going to urge a no vote on the McGovern Amendment. Well, I think you make a mistake. Miss, this would be so easy well, to rectify. Yeah. No, I, and again, this I, I, will be another I, one. I don't see it as okay. a problem. Yeah, no, well, I, mean, well, I, I, it, I do. Yeah, well, uh, if, if for no other reason, it gives the appearance person. of a problem. And whether it's uh, Republicans or Democrats, the idea that one person uh, basically has the authority uh, to, to certify this stuff, um, I think is, is problematic. And the bill reads, the chair of the joint committee on taxation shall notify the House and Senate in writing whenever the chair of the Joint Committee determines that an introduced bill described in subsection A1 contains at least each of the following proposals. Um, and, and again, I, I, I don't think this is a, should be controversial. It doesn't undercut your bill, but, you know, anyway, I, I would urge a yes vote on the... Vote occurs on the McGovern Amendment. Those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. I ask for a roll call. We'll call the roll. Mr. Sessions. Ms. Fox. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Woodall. No. Mr. Woodall votes no. Mr. Nugent? No. Mr. Nugent votes no. Mr. Scott? No. Mr. Scott votes no. Mr. Webster? No. Mr. Webster votes no. Ms. Slaughter? Aye. Ms. Slaughter votes aye. Mr. McGovern? Aye. Mr. McGovern votes aye. Mr. Hastings? Mr. Polis? Mr. Chairman? No. Chairman. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I was just going to ask, how is uh, Mr. Sessions? Mr. Sessions is not recorded. Please record me as no. Mr. Sessions votes no. And Mr. Clerk, the total? Total is two eyes, six noes. And the amendment is not agreed to. And the chair recognizes Mr. Webster. Well, I, I just at the proper time, I wanted to speak in favor of this bill. And I want to speak in, if, if now's the time. Any just, time to speak in favor. Okay, this great. I'm going to do it then. To... In this report, it says that there's $160 billion spent every year filling out income tax forms. Some of them are software, others are done by other people, but whatever, it costs the public that kind of money, which is a huge amount of money. There are a few who don't spend any money, they do it themselves. Most of them fill out this form that I have in my hand here, 1040EZ. It's one page. Here's the income. Here's the tax, here's your signature, done. Here's the instructions, one page of instructions for this form. And I just want everyone to know on this committee, if this bill is adopted the way it is, this is the form that people are going to have to fill out. No more will they spend $160 billion of their own money to fill out a tax form. It's going to be just this easy. I believe this has struck a chord. It's an awesome thing. So if you want to continue with the same kind of 1040 forms we fill out page after page, hundreds of pages of, 
of uh, instructions that people have to plow through. Matter of fact, it's said in here it's six billion hours are spent filling out these forms every year so that we can pay the government. It's crazy. So why wouldn't we have a tax code that says, here it is, it's easy. That's why they call this EZ, 1040 EZ. This is the form that 90% of the people would fill out in order to pay their taxes every year. No kinds of, no lines with little checks, you know, and you know how small the print is on this thing anyway. When you do the regular 1040. And every line you have to go through, you might miss something. Check this, check that, look up this, look up that. All kinds of documents you have to save and so forth. This gets rid of all of it. I think this is an awesome bill and it's a great start. It's a framework for saying to the American people, no more are you going to have to spend your hard-earned dollars just trying to pay the federal government what they believe is due them. Now it's going to be easy, it's going to be simple, and, and everybody is treated in the exact same manner. Everybody has a one-page form. They fill it out. They do it. It's an awesome thing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for well, bringing this forward. Let me, let me uh, thank my friend for his very uh, thoughtful and accurate, uh, from my perspective, assessment of this. And I, I saw Mr. Scott nodding. I saw Mr. Nugent nodding as well. Obviously, um, and, and I, I know Democrats because this is not a partisan issue. I mean, Democrats want to bring about meaningful reform, and so that's why I believe that what we're doing today is going to, again, as I talk about my uh, 32 years of service here, this is something that I've been trying to push for 32 years. And this will finally put the teeth into this to say, talk, 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 talk is nice, but action is what is uh, necessary, and we're gonna, gonna finally, I believe, make that happen. I'm saddened that I won't be here. I don't wanna say that I'm saddened I won't be here, but I'm, I will be observing, I will observe the process uh, next year. I anxiously look forward to that, and I, uh, I will be uh, honored to have played a role in moving us from simply uh, discussion to actually implementing what it is that my friend has talked about. And so I just wanna express my appreciation for the very thoughtful remarks and the, and the support of our colleagues uh, on that. Are there any other amendments? Oh, Mr. McGovern. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I deeply regret the way my friends on the other side of the aisle are beginning this very important debate about comprehensive tax reform. Um, all of us know that reform of the tax code is a pressing and important matter. Uh, it affects the lives and livelihoods of every person and business in this country, uh, and we, we need to do it right. Uh, but we also know something else. There is no way to succeed a comprehensive tax reform without sitting down together, as uh, the ranking member pointed out in her opening statement, in a bipartisan fashion and working through the tough decisions that have to be made. But this bill begins the process on just the opposite path, with an emergency meeting on a bill that has been available for less than 48 hours, and that was written only by one party with no input or participation from the other. Each one of us knows that a process that begins in a strictly partisan manner will not lead to the kind of reform that uh, we need. And so, Mr. Chairman, my amendment is simple. Uh, if your party insists on beginning this process on a strictly partisan basis, you should do it under the regular order of the House, not some kind of fast-track procedures that limit the protections uh, that, that allow the minority to make its voice heard. So as I said, my amendment is simple. It strikes the fast-track procedures and requires the tax reform debate to be conducted under the regular order of the House and Senate. Uh, well, let me, let me just say that um, I, I believe that, again, seeking input from the minority is exactly what we are going to be about and have been about. I mean, the fact, as I said last night, that we in the first 17 months of this Congress have made an order, had, had more open rules and more modified open rules than existed in the entire four years of the Democratic majority. And so, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to point the finger of blame other than to say that we welcome input. And we, we anxiously look forward to that. And, um, and, and I, I mean, just as I've said, Democrats are in favor of tax reform. Demo am, I, am I not right in saying that Democrats are in favor of tax reform? Democrats are really talks about something that De Mr. Woodall mentioned, and I, I concur with, and that is I want us to close loopholes. I want us to do this, and it needs to be done in a way in which we take action. Do you Mr. think that this proposal 
moves us in the direction of actually taking action. So I, I know that there will be Democratic proposals that are included in this final measure, because I know there are Democrats who support the idea of going to no more than two rates. I've heard Democrats talk about this. And so uh, this is going to be a bipartisan effort uh, when we get there. And so the, the, uh, the amendment is, uh, is not necessary to ensure that we will do that. And uh, I'm going to urge uh, opposition to the amendment. And I, and I would just – I'm happy to further recognize – I would just respond, but, Mr. Chairman, again, um, you know, you can talk about bipartisanship all you want, but we're beginning this process in a, in a very partisan manner. And quite frankly, yes, we do want uh, – Democrats do want tax reform. Uh, but when it comes to taxes, there's obviously a very there's, there are different differing opinions. I mean, uh, you have a presidential candidate in, in your party who has Swiss bank accounts and has accounts in the Cayman Islands and won't show us his tax returns and has a tax policy that we believe uh, favors the wealthiest interests in this country at the expense of the middle uh, class and and those struggling to get in the middle class. Uh, so uh, you know, having a process that allows there to be uh, bipartisan input when it comes to something like this is very, very important. And we're beginning it in a very, very partisan fashion. And uh, so I would urge you to support my amendment and um, hope that it will win bipartisan support. Mr. Mr. Chairman, can, can I ask the gentleman a question Woodall. about his amendment? I, I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, since this bill has been up for two days, I've had a chance to go through it, and I, I'm just looking. If, if we strike Section 3, I see Section 1 is the, is the short title and Section 2 is the uh, is the the the, uh, the findings. What's left of this bill if we strike section three? Re regular order, going through the committee process and you know and doing and, and letting committees deliberate and um, and doing this right way. You, you, this this you, you can bring a bill. You can bring you can bring a tax reform bill to the floor uh, now through regular order. There's nothing that I mean. This is this is again goes back to what our ranking member said. That this is more kind of a press release than it is. Anything else? But, but Would you yield with it? Will gentlemen yield? I'd be happy to yield. I, I thank my friend for yielding. And let me just say that that it's true that, uh, you know, there is a structure in place to do this, but we've gone for literally decades with Democrats and Republicans talking about the imperative of taking this on. And I believe that there is, again, bipartisan agreement. I strongly support President Obama's call for reduction of the top corporate rate. That's a, that's a call that President Obama has made, and I believe that he's right on track in doing that. But guess what? We haven't been able to take action. This measure will, again, create the incentive, utilizing a very, very normal structure that's used on many issues, on trade issues and others, to try and expedite the procedure. It needs to be done with both the House and the Senate. And uh, so the, the, the notion of all of a sudden saying we're just going to let the same old uh, structure, which has gotten no action at all, continue to be in place is, uh, I think, a, a mischaracterization. The American people, as I listen to Mr. Webster, I've got to say, they want us to act. All this does is it says you have to act. And so I think that, uh, I think that we're doing the right thing here. So thank you for yielding. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, if, if what the gentleman is saying is that he's striking the expedited procedures from the bill that is designed to provide expedited uh, procedures, um, I suppose a vote no on the whole bill will be just as, as good for the gentleman as voting in favor of his, uh, of his amendment uh, in terms of, of the substance as we talk about what's, what's partisanship and where the, where the substance is, right. well, I mean, is here. And again, I go back to what I said in the very beginning. I mean, if, if this were a bipartisan process, I mean, the, 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 uh, the leaders on the minority side would, all, would have been called in to have discussions about how we would, should proceed. There's none of that. So this is this is this is a, this is your, you know, this is your press release. And um, and my view is that if you want a bipartisan process, it, it ought to begin differently than this. Thank but you. Well, what occurs on the government amendment? Those people say aye. Those aye. opposed no. no. Sure the no yes, we'll roll call. Roll. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Session votes no. Ms. Fox. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Woodall. No. Mr. Woodall votes no. Mr. Nugent. No. Mr. Nugent votes no. Mr. Scott. No. Mr. Scott votes no. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster votes no. Ms. Slaughter? Aye. Ms. Slaughter votes aye. Mr. McGovern? Aye. Mr. McGovern votes aye. Mr. Hastings? Mr. Polis? Mr. Chairman? No. The chairman votes no. Mr. Clerk, the total? The total is two aye, six no. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I do have an amendment. Um, I think we, we have all agreed. I think we've made it clear from our careers in being here. 
uh, that we want the tax code to be updated and reformed, and we are way to work in a bipartisan manner to accomplish that goal. I always feel up here, very often, not always, I, I often feel that if we're allowed to participate, that some kind of favor has been done for us. I think we all rem need to remember how we get here uh, by the, the good votes of the people that we live with. They intend, well, the when I come here, well, the just a moment, I'd like I to finish my say. thought. Uh, the people who vote for us, regardless of the party, because they don't care so much about that, what they do is expect us to get down here and work on their common problems. They don't want anybody to do backroom dealings and then to come up with, with a bill with no committee work on it and then tell us that, you know, graciously we'll all do bipartisanship by and by. Uh, this is... This is really imperative, and I, uh, if we were to just leave here this morning, we would only have what your principles are on budgeting, and I'd, I'd like to give you some of ours, because we have them as well. Uh, the flawed and entirely partisan priorities reflected in this bill make a bad start on any bipartisanship. They point in one direction, the Republican uh, priorities do, less fairness, less of the burden shouldered by people who have the most to give, uh, fewer brackets, top, lower top rates, lower corporate taxes, less revenue, and higher deficits because this bill nowhere mentions the reduction of deficits in any way that you want to do in this tax bill. We have a different vision for tax reform, a vision reflected in the amendment that I'm offering this morning. I'd like to take a minute to outline our priorities. First of all, we must identify sources of revenue that in combination with smart, targeting spending reductions will provide the long-term means to reduce the national debt significantly while making investments in national priorities such as infrastructure, education, research, and defense that are critical to the future American competitiveness and job growth. You know there's a brand new report out about how we have outsourced ourselves into a very dangerous situation. I would note that nothing in the Republican bill says tax reform needs to lower the deficit or even to hold it level. On the contrary, there are indications that Republican tax reform would make the deficit worse, and we disagree with that approach. We want a rate structure that distributes the tax burden in a more progressive manner. We want a code that discourages tax avoid avoidance, including the use of entities and accounts in tax haven jurisdictions such as Swiss bank accounts or assets hidden in Bermuda or the Cayman Islands. We want to preserve and improve the provision of the tax code that supports the middle class home ownership, education, retirement savings, and health care. We agree the time has come to repeal the alternative minimum tax. And we want to retain and improve the refundable tax credits that encourage work and education while lifting millions of Americans out of poverty. We want to eliminate tax breaks for businesses that move jobs and profits overseas in combination with a reduction in taxes uh, for American manufacturers, which are vital to innovation and job growth. In other words, we'd rather uh, benefit the manufacturers who stay here than to people who move their jobs uh, offshore. Finally, we want to preserve and improve incentives for small business investment and growth. And those are the kinds of bills that we have always passed when we were in the majority. Our amendment would remove the flawed expedited procedures and misguided principles, replace them with the priorities that I have just laid out. And I would hope that my colleagues could join me and support my amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you very much. Again, a very thoughtful and interesting uh, proposal uh, that the gentlewoman has, has offered. I will say that the goal of uh, deficit and debt reduction is a priority. I mean, I, again, I, uh, I uh, as I said, I've been here around the track uh, a couple of times. And uh, when I um, first got here, we had um, an economy that Ronald Reagan as president had inherited that had uh, interest rates that were around 16, 17 percent. I remember it because I bought my first place here on Capitol Hill with an interest rate of 17 percent. We had unemployment that was well into double digits. We had um, inflation 
people recall that, that was sky high. So Ronald Reagan inherited a terrible economy from, uh, from Jimmy Carter. Barack Obama inherited a terrible economy from George W. Bush. We had um, an unemployment rate that was uh, 7%. We had, uh, we had interest rates that were uh, near zero. We had an inflation rate that was just above zero. Uh, but obviously, we had uh, a lot of people hurting. We still do. And at that time, the prescription for economic recovery was put into place. Ronald Reagan, with bipartisan support, and I have well, to say, when I first, if, if I may, if I may, may I, may I finish my statement? Well, I'll yield, I'll yield, I'll yield, it's my time, I'll yield. I believe. It's your time? Oh, is not doing this amendment? Yeah, you offered the amendment, and you completed your statement, and then I recognized myself. But, I mean, if, well, if you'd like me, if you'd like me to yield, of course I'm happy to yield. I'm only going to say Even though you wouldn't yield to me, I'm happy to yield President Reagan, you're absolutely right. They did the great tax change. With him and, and Dan Rostenkowski helped him with it. Uh, that's not what I'm talking that's about. If I could exactly reclaim my time, that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, if okay. I could reclaim my time, I'm, I'm talking six years before that. Mm -hmm. Okay, 1980, 1981. You're mm -hmm. talking about the 1986 Tax Reform Act. 1980, 1981. Uh, this terrible economy had had been uh, inherited from Jimmy Carter and Barack Obama received a. You want me to yield again? No, I was just. I, I just want you to remember the Democrats then did help the president with the financial problem. They okay, I was together. I was in the midst of saying I was in the midst of saying in 1981, mm -hmm. okay, 1981, mm -hmm. Democrats supported Ronald Reagan's effort to put into place um, an economic growth package. You see, that's the point. We don't have an opportunity to do that now. That well, was will, the point I was trying to make. Okay. Um, in 1981, um, there was an economic recovery package that Ronald Reagan put into place, and that package enjoyed the support of many Democrats. They voted for that. And the uh, I was a, this excuse me, this is the year that I came to the Congress, nineteen eighty one. I think it was a little before my friend arrived in Congress. And I will say that at that time when Ronald Reagan proposed his plan for economic recovery, it was designed to reduce marginal tax rates. It was designed to reduce the rate of growth of federal spending. And both of those measures in May of nineteen eighty one and in August of nineteen eighty one enjoyed strong bipartisan support. My point is this, um, Barack Obama inherited a bad economy but and we have partisan support. Barack Obama inherited a bad economy and we have what is characterized as the worst recession since the Great Depression. It's not because of the depth of that economic reception, recession, it's because of the length of that recession. We all acknowledge this has been very, very lengthy. At this time, in 1984, when Ronald Reagan was running for re-election, having inherited an economy that had sky-high interest rates, inflation, and unemployment, we are enjoying 8.5 percent gross domestic product growth. And today, we are sadly seeing 1.9 percent gross domestic product growth in this country uh, as a byproduct of the economic plan that was put into place. And so I think that the idea of saying that we're not focused on uh, economic growth, the gentlewoman's amendment. And I, again, I, I congratulate her for pointing to, to many things that we we uh, we agree on. We want to have more manufacturing jobs in the United States, and I believe that this kind of tax simplification is going to do, as my friend uh, from Georgia has said, do away with a lot of the preferences and a lot of the the provisions that are in here that many forces in this town are, are consistently supporting. And so uh, we share many of the goals, but the idea of saying that we're now all of a sudden going to tie the hands of people when it comes to how they deal with their own money, uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in globalization, and I believe in the ability to invest around the world, and the notion of imposing constraints on that I, I, I find to be silly. So the vote occurs on the uh, slaughter member. Those in favor will say aye. Those aye. opposed, no. Then it's sure the noes have it. Roll call, have it. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Sessions. No. Mr. Session votes no. Ms. Fox? Mr. Bishop? Mr. Woodall? No. Mr. Woodall votes no. Mr. Nugent? No. Mr. Nugent votes no. Mr. Scott? No. Mr. Scott votes no. Mr. Webster? No. Mr. Webster votes no. Ms. Slaughter? Aye. Ms. Slaughter votes aye. Mr. McGovern? Aye. Mr. McGovern votes aye. Mr. Hastings? Mr. Polis? Mr. Chairman? Uh, no. The chairman votes no. Mr. Clerk, the total? Two aye, six no. And the amendments not agreed. Are there further amendments? 
If not, the vote occurs on the motion of the gentleman from Dallas. Those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. Aye. Aye. Sure the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The motion will clerk call the roll. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Sessions votes aye. Ms. Fox. Mr. Bishop. Mr. Woodall. Aye. Mr. Woodall votes aye. Mr. Nugent. Aye. Mr. Nugent votes aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Scott votes aye. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Slaughter. No. Ms. Slaughter votes no. Mr. McGovern. No. Mr. McGovern votes no. Mr. Hastings. Mr. Polis. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Chairman votes Mr. aye. Mr. Clerk, the total? Six aye, two no. And uh, the motion is agreed to. And let me say that, of course, the rights of the minority will be maintained to uh, submit uh, any views. And without objection, the staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes to all matters ordered reported by the committee today. And the chair is authorized to make such motions as may be necessary to go to conference with the Senate on H.R. 6169 or other similar measures. Thank you all very much. Without objection, the committee stands adjourned. <laughs>